Hello, Tina, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you today? You feel better. You feel stronger. At least that's what I feel from you, from your energy. So, are you getting outside and getting some sunshine? You've been working outside in your flowers or something? You're feeling stronger, you're getting fresh air, you're breathe, breathing. I have a ring that says just to breathe because I forget to actually breathe. Anyway, so when Norm came in, well, he just grabbed your mom's hand and he drug her forward. Like, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you're getting your ass up here too. When he came in, he always comes in in his Julius Caesar outfit. And I said, all right, buddy, I, that's getting boring. Let's let's do something else. <laughs> so now he's Elvis. <laughs> he's got an Elvis costume on. And he's, he's wiggling and do, trying to do the Elvis hip thing. <laughs> oh, he just dropped to his knees like Elvis used to on stage. <laughs> he's going, he's going all in on it. He's singing, don't be cruel. Hang on. I can't, I can't hear the rest of it. Okay. He's singing, don't be cruel to a heart that's true. And the next line in the song is, baby, if I made you mad. He knows you're still mad at him. Oh, coming from you, I'm hearing all this <laughs> towards him. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> he's just, it's like he's hitting the words and batting them off. It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, he's always so funny. Oh, I don't know. He does this almost every time, too. He turned around, put his butt right over here, and farted on me. He must have been the fart king. <laughs> well, I can't smell it. <laughs> Lucky me. Maybe, maybe their farts don't stink. I don't know. <laughs> he says, okay, now we're going to get serious. Oh, he grabbed your mom again. And practically, practically drug her off her feet. Get over here. Mom's going, I don't know why they have to act like that. He's saying in a kind of a cranky, saucy way. He said, enough of that bullshit. She's bopping one of them or two of them over the head. So one or two of them is getting a headache all the time. Because she's like smacking them, smacking them, smacking them over the head. Like trying to get their attention to straighten up, fly right. They need, they need to remember there is karma. But what is it? Okay, boy, she's being real slow about pulling it up. Um, something about jewelry they took. She's And she's holding up a necklace. I can't tell exactly what it is because she's bringing it in really slow and holding it up. So I don't know if it's a particular necklace or jewelry in general. Something about it coming back around to you. It's going to come back around. <laughs> she she has these big panties on and she's pull, she says, pull up your big girl panties. And they're like way extra large, like way bigger than you would wear. She, pull up your big girl panties. And she's being very forceful about it.
it'll come back around but it's just stuff stuff is stuff stuff doesn't really mean shit we can't take it with us so it's still just stuff and she's saying stuff like being real forceful with that word she says most of what I had was junk don't fucking worry about it be good in your heart so oh that makes sense because before before the reading I I, sometimes they'll suggest it. I think I suggested it this time. Let's pull a release card. And I want them to pick it. So the one they picked was surrender your attachment to results. Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. The formula for success is to do all you can do to make things happen. Then let go of the results. Holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it, and it does. Put that up there so you can read it. Whoop, whoop. That's, and that's the way you're supposed to do it. You, you put your intention out there. I want this, this, and this. This is what I'd like to have. Not I have to have, not demanding, not making just. And I write it down. I'm, I was going to do that this morning, and I haven't done my list for a while. I put my gratitude list and my intention list this is what i'd like to have come forward for me and then i let it go let them find the perfect way it may not even come in the way that you're thinking at all it'll be in a better way so put those int intentions out there and try not to put any angry energy in it when you write it down just say, please, may I? But don't put negative things into it either. Don't say, I want them to burn in hell. I, I don't want this and I don't want that. It has to be positive intention. So if there's something negative, like you want them to burn in hell, think of a positive way to say it. I don't know. I don't I, Right offhand, I can't think of one. <laughs> make it a positive. Make it always make your intentions a positive statement because you they don't understand I don't want. They understand I do want. Why it works that way, I don't fucking know. They understand what you do want. They understand that forward moving energy. The other one is a pulling back energy. I don't want this and I don't want that. So like when these people they really hate me. They kept bothering me all the time. Instead of me saying, I don't want them around, I would say, please find them another place to go and some new people to hang out with somewhere away from me so they don't bother me anymore. And it's pretty much worked. I hardly ever see them anymore. Except for the last time I saw him and he sat down at the table and he says, I hope you die. He flipped my bitch switch. I swear I went off on him. <laughs> he just he just hates himself. But I don't care. I don't need to be the brunt of it, and neither do you. So do it in a positive way. Like I want these people to I wanted this person and his girlfriend to go find some other people and go have fun. Find a new spot. Find a new something. Find something new. That will make you happy away from me. Instead of, I don't want you around me. Anyway, I hope. Do you keep a journal? I used to, and then I started deleting mine. I was afraid I'd die and somebody would get on my computer and find all my shit and read all my crazy ideas. Something about keeping a journal. So if you don't, maybe you ought to. But journal, journal, what are you grateful for? Is the sun shining up there? Um, 
It's 71 degrees here and I've got the back door open. I'm very grateful for that. Even if it's the worst day of your life, find five things to write down that you're grateful for, that you can still hear, that you can still see, that you can still walk, that you're breathing. Find some five things that are positive that you're grateful for. A roof over your head, anything. But I try to find new ones each time. And then do your intentions. He's singing, oh, you know I love you true. Now he's got a guitar. He's still Elvis. My mom's trying to say something. I can't, and I can't quite understand her. She's being a little soft-spoken, or hang on. Okay, she she says you need to go do you. That blood is not always thicker than water. Sometimes you just gotta go. Some. Okay, she says you need to cut cords, and I'm sure you know about cutting cords. If not, go to YouTube. Tons of videos for free on there about cutting cords, and I have to go back and do it all the time. I haven't done it for a while, and I got one I need to cut the cords with now. It doesn't mean you never speak to them again. It just means it cuts that energetic pull they have on you. And it could, it could be somebody you talk to every day, but you can still cut that cord to keep them from draining your energy. Do you have a cat? She's showing you like walking outside, and I think it's your house. And there's a cat with a really fluffy tail. Um, standing there kind of kind of to greet you and follow you around. So if you don't have a cat like that, you might be getting straight one come in maybe. It's very friendly, wants very attached to your energy and wants to follow you around, be your friend. She says and purr for you. They're both saying that you're getting your power back. Yeah. Center yourself. You've got to concentrate on yourself because nobody can pull your power back in better than you can. Pull those cords in. Cut those cords. Pull them in. Let their cords, let the universe take care of them. Send them with love and light, their energy. Pull your energy back to center. Cleanse and release them. There's oh, tourmaline. She's saying you need to take some tourmaline and hold it to your heart. Usually it's rose quartz, and I keep one next to my computer. This was a real cheap, it was only five bucks. And if I start feeling drained when I'm doing readings, I put my hand over here and I can actually feel it come up my arm and go to my heart. And I know you have plenty of crystals, so I'm suggesting some rose quartz to help heal your heart. They are saying you need some tourmaline. I have little ones, I have big ones. And bring it up next to your heart and kind of protect your heart. And get rid of some of that darker, heavier. Let the crystal absorb the dark, heavy crap, anger, resentment. They were going to say another word, but they didn't. It's it's like they're mumbling around, like which there's something else they wanted to say, but they're like mumbling around about it, like they can't decide. Norm says, 
know that you're perfect just the way you are. You just need your strength back. Stop fighting the little demons in your head. Stop fighting them and allow. They're not demons. You obviously think they're demons. All the little... You and I have squirrel brains. They just... All the time. They just rattle and carry on. Shit comes through there and I'm going, the hell is that? Where did that come from? That doesn't sound like me. It's usually one of my guides putting something in there. So uh, ask your guides to slow it down a little bit if it, if it goes through too fast or rattles too much. And if you repeatedly get the same type of messages that pop into your head and run around in there because inside of my head's vacant. <laughs> it's hollow. It's got plenty of room to bounce around in there. So look for a common theme. And those other people would call them crazy ideas. They're not crazy ideas. We are a little off the wall. So fucking what? We are genuine. We're real. Um, our hearts break. Oh, um, um, that's ooh. That made me want to cry. Um, we're real. Just because our head works a little different, just because we're on a different path than these other people, just because we're more sensitive to, because I believe you're you're a lot like me that you you're such a large empath that you you can feel you can feel. If a person walks up next to me, I can feel whether they think they don't like me at all and I need to back up, or if there's somebody I need to step closer to. I hope I'm, I was going to say, I hope I'm making sense, but me, I don't make sense very often. You feel a lot of that, but you're also absorbing a lot of that that you don't need to absorb. Norm's going like this. Do your protection bubble. Again, cutting cords, protection bubbles does not mean you never talk to them again. It just protects your own energy. Some of those people are coming at you energetically. Probably not on purpose. I mean, not, it's not like they're sending negative darts your way, like, like physically. But their energy is, they're feeling that way towards you and, they're sh and it's projecting towards you. You need to put a bubble on against them. Sometimes I do bubbles that are screen wire so things kind of flow in and out. Sometimes the one I like, I dislike the most, but I'll do it if I have to, like I had to do with that dude, is the one that's a mirror on the outside. Somebody that's that angry, I hate to bounce their anger back to them because they're so full of it already. They don't need it. They need love shot back to them. But if I just can't take it anymore and I feel that coming at me all the time and draining me, I have to put, I have to put the mirrors up. Sorry, you're going to have to get it back for a while because I can't handle it. So you're sensitive to that kind of shit like I am. And it can drain us bad. And then I forget myself and go, I wonder why I feel like shit. Oh, maybe it's one of those things. Uh, Norm's over here tapping me really hard on the head. So uh, evidently that message is kind of sort of for me too. He says, Rhonda, get on the stick. Both of you, get on the stick. Okay, so protect your own energy. Protect your own shit. And you're going to feel so much lighter and brighter, and especially spring coming. And just being outside for a few minutes the other day, I was like, yeah, I felt like I was alive again. You're going to feel that way. 
Norm says to kick their ass to the curb. I almost want to say he's been kicking one of them. Like kick like kicking them in the ass or kicking them in the leg. So if you hear one of them complaining about their butt or their leg and hobbling around, <laughs> you'll know why. Uh, he's holding up a little bell and jingling it, so you should hear you should hear the tinkling of him. He said he's still not getting through to you very well. You're still not letting him in because you're still mad at him. That's creating a barrier that it's hard for them to get through. He says, just remember I love you. And how we used to dance and dance the night away under the moonlight. Self-preservation. He says, you have to do it. I'm not giving you any other choice. You have to. I'm not going to watch you suffer like this. Okay, it's like, <laughs> it's like he's got a rope tied to you and he's pulling it. Like, he's going to drag you until you get to where he thinks you're going to feel better. He's, he's not going to let go. Got a big old fat rope tied around your waist. He says, she's been kicking and screaming, but I'm not going to let go of this rope. And it's not a cord. It's not a cord like energetic cord we need to cut. It's a physical rope. <laughs> oh, he's always a blast. Wish I could have met him in real life. He and I would have had fun. Okay. He says, he's, all right, he's going to leave. He says, I'm taking the old gal with me. She can't get away. I know how to find her. <laughs> he's being ornery. <laughs> she says she doesn't want to get away from him. She's perfectly happy having him around. They're cute. And they're both yelling as they walk away. They're yelling, not at each other. They're yelling back, we love you. We love you more than you know to the moon and back. To the stars that shine. To the bottom of the sea. To the ends of the earth. To the whole world. Norm goes like this, to the whole world, that's how much we love you. And with that, they're gone. Okay. Much love to you, my dear. Um, thanks, thanks for waiting for me until I felt better. And it wasn't bad. It was just, it was more like this brain fog and it lasted for at least a couple of months and I'd sleep like 12 hours a day and I didn't want to get off the couch. That's not me. I don't, I'm not a couch person, but I couldn't get off the couch. I just, I just drained. I was tired. There's like I said, the fog in my head and even, um, you know, Reiki and energy work and shit like that. It would ease it. And then it, so anyway, I had to wait. I didn't want to take anybody's money for doing a half-ass job. I needed to get my head cleared out. And this was physical. Otherwise, shit didn't, didn't bother me that bad. It was just the tired and the brain fog. About three days. Kicked my ass. That was it. It was okay. It was lingering shit.
But when you're tired like that, when you've been sick, your body needs to heal. My body needed it. Even though I can't sit still usually. And I got to get out of here and go up to my mom's and do a couple hours worth of who knows what. So much love to you. See you later. Hopefully I'm going to start the lies again. I hope, I hope, I hope. So now that my head's clearing out. Much love to you. Rhonda Consett, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator. Voice for your loved ones. Later.